your boy EJ Live, Comcast Cable Channel 66, Sports Enthusiasm. Also, my real name is Eric Banks. I'm a graduate of West Catholic High School. I was all state as a football performer. I was all city. I played against such legendary football players who went to the pros like Rich Gannon, Burt Grossman, Eric Williams. Uh, I owned a scholarship to uh, Westchester as well as Widener. But unfortunately, when I got to college, football became more of a job. And also, I'm going to be 100% honest with you, because I went to Catholic school, I went to interracial schools, we had the only African-American football team in the city of Philadelphia for CYO ball. CYO was from first to eighth grade, Catholic youth organization. Um, getting called the N-word so many times on football fields, seeing my friends that come to watch the game chased home and beat up and called the N-word, it really made me... I don't want to say hate white folks, but it made me have a deep, deep, deep down anger and resentment towards them, which I took out on the football field, which made me a better football player because I had that hate and anger in me, which I would release and channel on the football field. However, when I got to college and started associating with Caucasian women and started partying with uh, Caucasian guys who didn't have that mentality, I realized that you can't lump everybody into the same group. And if it's not true for all of them, it's not true for any of them. So I no longer had that hate and anger that I needed to play football, so I just stopped playing. But during the course of me playing sports, I realized that athletes are treated so much better than regular members of inner city society. First off, you get a chance to travel out of the hood. You're going to Atlantic City, you're going to Pleasantville, you're going to Delaware, you're going to all these suburban communities, seeing things that are outside of the uh, urban environment. Your mind is exposed to different things, you see different things, so you can't come back to your community the same way. The pressure and uh, the psychological aspect of it comes when you have to now take these instances and these emotions and these feelings back to your same community and deal with people who don't have this same viewpoint. So you could get accused of selling out, mm -hmm. you could be accused of being white, and you knowing yourself that you haven't changed, just your experiences have changed. Mm -hmm. So this is a great pressure. If you happen to be good enough that you're being recruited by colleges, that's another pressure. Um, where should I go? Uh, what school is going to offer me the best opportunity to succeed and if you are like most African Americans a first generation college student you also have the pressure of your family obligations and your friends expectations of you're a great football player you're a great basketball player you want to go to college and go to the pros and save all of us and get us all out of the community on the gravy train that's a great pressure one of the main reasons I've lost all my hair and my beard is turned jet white and gray is the pressure that I constantly feel 24 hours a day to live up to the expectations that people place on me as an athlete, as a figure in a community, as a person who has to always be poloed up. I always have to be well dressed and well trimmed because in the inner city, it's not about what you know, it's more about what you have and what you show. So you can have a great message but it could get lost in translation because if you don't look like you have anything, nobody's going to listen to you. Because the thing is, if you don't have anything, it's not working for you, so why should I listen to you? So these are all pressures that I experienced. And speaking, you know, I had a good relationship with Alan Iverson. I'm not going to sit up here and throw names, but just to use him as an example. Uh, one of my best friends was his bodyguard, so I got a chance to spend a lot of close quality time with him away from the cameras and away from, you know, the ESPN, CBS highlight machine. And one of his great pressures and issues was the fact that people always expect you to throw away your friends when you get successful. They say, oh, how do you have all those millions of dollars and hang around that guy? Or how do you have all those hundreds of million dollars and you still go to Palmer's or Transit or the strip club? Well, I would like to tell you this, that some of those gentlemen and some of those ladies that people have a problem with the superstar athletes and entertainers hanging out with are the same ones that help them get to that position. For instance, even though I'm a big guy, even though I'm not a sucker, I went to Catholic school. I was a lover, not a fighter. I had two fights in my whole life. 
the thing is, I never had to fight because it was dudes in the community who respected me enough to push me away from that. E man, you an athlete, you go to Catholic school, you won't be somebody, you don't need to get caught up in all that. But that's a pressure, because as a person born in the community, you want to be part of the community. You don't want to be looked at as a, a sucker, as somebody soft. If my neighborhood is rumbling, I want to rumble. But the neighborhood look at it like, no, you're different, you're special. We need you to be better than us. We know we ain't SHIT, and we ain't never going to be SHIT. But you have a chance to do so, so we're going to sacrifice our situation to push you a little further. So once when I make it, or once when AI make it, how dare you guys tell him that he has to cut the same friends off who helped him get to that position. And that's a pressure, man. That's a dilemma. Because you don't want to leave your friends, but at the same token, you might know this guy has a criminal record. You might know this guy has a drug issue. You might know this guy has problems with expressing himself in the greater community. You know, the urban wow. situation doesn't always translate over into the business world. Mm -hmm. So that's a pressure, brother. It's a lot of pressures on athletes. It's a pressure to perform. It's a fear of failure. 20,000 people have my jersey on. They're screaming my name. What if I can't perform? You know? And then you get addicted to the lifestyle. You get addicted to the money. You get addicted to the women. You get addicted to the preferential treatment. Mm -hmm. So as your career winds down and slows down, what are you going to do with your life? Junior Seau, great linebacker, great athlete from University of Southern California, potential Hall of Fame player with the San Diego Chargers and New England Patriots. Yesterday he was found dead mm -hmm. in his house of a self-afflicted gunshot wound at 43 years old. Now, I don't know any details to it, but as a person with my mind state and what I know about pressure and psychology, I think that athletes have a hard time adjusting to life after the fame and fortune. Nobody's calling your name anymore. You're not on ESPN every night. You're not being called to make presentations. You're not on the television shows anymore. And adjusting back to regular life is hard when you never have been a regular person. I would, I would propose to you that those psychological implications had something to do with his death, just like it has something to do with Andre Waters' death and several other athletes who have committed suicide or died under suspect circumstances. I would propose to you that it is the pressure that they feel of not being in the spotlight, or maybe not being able to support themselves and their families in the lifestyle that they have become accustomed to by the economic derivatives derived from the system. So, uh, you know, that's what I just wanted to talk about, and i like to thank Dr. Tom and all the uh, psychiatrist at the convention here in Philadelphia. Enjoy your time in our city, and I hope what I said have been very, very, very informative to you. Um, Bro Rashim, is there any other questions you would like to ask me? I pretty much summed everything up, man. Well, what, what do you, what would you like to say as an athlete who uh, went to, he went to St. John Newman's, yeah, yeah, which yeah. I went to West Catholic, mm -hmm. uh, we, was pretty much the same thing, you know, you may be from an inner city community, but you go to an interracial school, yeah. and as an athlete, did you find any specific pressure on you? Did it affect you in some kind of way? Oh yeah, all, all the way. Like would you, you say, like to like give you an said, example? Like you said, coming from the inner city, the urban neighborhood, uh, the neighborhood look at you differently than they look at anybody else. So you're kind of put on a pedestal and everybody's looking towards you to come out to be the successful one. But I always looked at success as uh, 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 not so making an NBA or NFL or the NBL, but I always looked at success and just building up yourself first. Indeed. So once you build up yourself first, then some of that pressure died down because you know in yourself that uh, you know you can make it happen, but a lot of times you can't make it happen. You got a lot of elements in the neighborhood that could draw you away from being successful. Indeed. And like he was saying about Iverson, like you know, in the way they screen the screening process when you get to these professional forums, how you can't be with your friends, you can't be with this. But if you look through the histories, uh, they always shut down black organizations, man. Like a lot of guys, they make all this money. One of these guys might come out and actually start a black organization. So they want to eliminate you from that forum. So they can't even elevate to start any type of organization. But yeah, the pressure is definitely there in the neighborhood. Uh, playing wise, definitely pressure. Your family there, yes. your scouts there. Yes. Uh, you don't want to have a bad game. That could psychologically damage you. You don't want your uncle, your drunk uncle, you there want, hollering at you. Exactly. You don't, you, don't want none of you. you don't want none of that, man. And like you said, 
people wearing your jersey, screaming your name and stuff like that. And this is another aspect of it, the media. Yes. When you're in a professional forum, the media saying you this, you a bust, this and that. That could weigh on you psychologically as well. Exactly. So many athletes that I know don't even read the paper or don't even listen to the radio because generally they don't have anything better, good to say about you yeah. because controversy sells. Mm -hmm. You know, if these athletes were half of the people that the media makes them out to be, why would any of us ever support them? Exactly. You exactly. know, you hear so many negative stories and negative spins. But just because somebody can dunk a basketball or sack a quarterback or score a soccer goal or score a goal in hockey mm -hmm. or hit a home run, that does not automatically endow them with any social skills, exactly. with any redeeming economic or intellectual qualities. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, a lot of the athletes know that. They get pushed through school, they get these uh, semi-literate courses just to keep them academically eligible so they can play ball. <laughs> and then when they knee break, or they rip their anterior crusate ligament, or they get some life-ending or career-ending injury, yeah. what do you have? Nothing. Nothing to fall back on. And I hope he doesn't get mad at me for saying this, but I have a gentleman that I know named Demetrius Hightower. Anybody who's watching this, you can Google him. He used to play for the uh, Dallas Cowboys. He was the number one draft pick for the Dallas Cowboys. You can find Mr. Hightower any day roaming up 60th Street from Market to Gerard, babbling incoherently, with long dreadlocks, flip-flops, and slippers on. Not that there's anything wrong with long dreadlocks, but the point I'm trying to make is obvious that this man has lost some sort of his sanity and has a hard time focusing on reality as it so stands. Because it was hard for him to go from being a number one draft pick to the Cowboys to getting cut. And he was unable to pick the pieces of his life back up together. So now he is psychologically disturbed. And his story is a horror story to many of the young brothers in West Philadelphia who remember him from being on the Dallas Cowboys. And they say, well, my God, if it could happen to him, it could happen to anybody. So you got to be real careful with this fame and fortune thing because the pressure of the fame and the fortune, once you get on top, where else is there to go but down? And the world spend a fortune to build you up. The world is like this. They'll spend... Ten thousand dollars to build you up, but spend a million dollars to tear you back down. Exactly. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Exactly. So once again, this is your boy EJ, Eric Banks, West Catholic graduate, 1986, all state, all city, with my boy Rashane Middleton, St. John Newman, but I ain't graduated from there. I graduated from Rip Winchett and Prep in Massachusetts, all city, all state, all American. Went on to play college ball in California and New York. Graduated from Cheney University with my degree. Now I'm just out here trying to get my money how I get it and enlighten all the brothers and sisters out here about what's really going on. And I graduated from Lincoln, class of 96. I've been a school teacher, mental health worker. Right now I'm a juvenile probation officer and I still do TSS work. Also, uh, Comcast Cable Channel 66. Every Saturday we have a show called Sports Enthusiasm where we blend sports, history, and politics all together in one big ball. Mm -hmm. So, it's your boy EJ. Shouting out Dr. Tom, shouting out Cooper, Cooper Medical Center, and shouting out Black and Nobel, the number one bookstore in Philadelphia in beautiful scenic North Philly, right here in the heart at Broad Neary. The heart of North Philly. The heart and of Philly. You see, we Thank are you, around books because That's we are good very good educated. Line water for you too, brother. Yes. You definitely yes. dropped it on us. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the state of the athletes yeah. today, they That's are great. like superheroes to the youth. Oh, man. Them and rappers, so yes. we do have intellectual brothers that come to the bookstore and hang out. So make sure y'all come out and hang out with us sometime too. Most dangerous thing in the world, a black man with a book. That's right. Thank you for having we got us. got plenty of them. Yes, thank you for listening. And hopefully you guys down here from all over the world at the convention will enjoy this presentation. Unfortunately, I couldn't be there with you because I, being a fanatical Philly sports fan, I will be in D.C. for the weekend as the Phillies stomp the Nationals. <laughs> Live. Philadelphia. Athletes. Feeling pressure. Sometimes it can drive you crazy. And yes, I do think that the psychology or the psychiatry of sports is something that you guys would be able to help us with if you could understand the mind state of the athlete. Thank you. Peace. Definitely.